Previously, on Crazy Chicken Lady Grows Yarn. Cape Timber is back for a second year. Could I spin, weave, and sew a cloak? In a month, I'm going to need some wool. Finally, there is enough hand-spun yarn to begin weaving the cloth for my cloak, and it is beautiful. I'm so pleased. However, the question that plagues weavers, both new and experienced, is thus. How do I make this into the best cloth possible? How do I know how close together or what set to put this yarn? It's not like I can just look it up on the internet like a commercial yarn. This yarn is unique. And what's worse, it's not all the same thickness. We'll blame the spinner. I've divided it into thick and thin yarn and start by measuring how many wraps per inch, about how many yarns fit side by side in one inch. The thick yarn gives me 16 wraps per inch and the thin yarn gives me 30 wraps per inch. You know what? Let's talk more about the planning while I work. I'm weaving the simplest kind of fabric, plain weave or tabby, because this gives me the most fabric for the yarn and I feel it highlights the texture of the hand spun beautifully. There's no way I'm going to get all the information without sampling. Sampling is a wonderful thing and I can go on and on about how great it is, but I'm not going to. And I'm not going to sample today. I don't have enough yarn. So I make the best guess I can and arrive at a set of 16 ends per inch, determined mostly because I have an 8 dent reed and this gives me 2 yarns per dent, or slot. Well, you'll see later. So I have a total of about 5,200 yards spun up, ready to go. I set aside a little less than half for the weft. And this leaves me about 3,200 yards for the warp. I mentioned we're fudging the math, right? I want to weave as wide a cloth as possible. My loom can weave 36 inches, but I'm also recovering from the summer. So I'm feeling that my wingspan, or distance I feel comfortable reaching to throw the shuttle, is about 32 inches. 32 inches wide times 16 ends per inch, I will need 512 yarns all the same length for the warp. That's what I'm measuring now on this warping mill. But wait, there's more math. Sorry. How long can I make this cloth? Well, we take the total warp ends, divided by the number of ends, and this gives me a warp length of 6 yards 1 foot. The cloth won't be as long as that, because at the start and finish of the warp are lost to loom waste. It will also shrink further when fold. There, that's the warp and the math done. Let's get this yarn on the loom. I warp back to front, and for this next step, I need to get the yarn onto the warp beam with as even a tension as possible. Even blocked, this yarn is fluffy enough to tangle if I take my eyes off it. But tension keeps the warp organized. I'm using these books to provide some weight as I wind the yarn onto the beam. These white stringy bits are called heddles, and which one I thread the yarn through will determine the pattern of the cloth. 
I'm going for very simple pattern, but even still, with over 500 heddles to thread, this is getting tedious. But it's a good opportunity for mindfulness and to give our thoughts some room to breathe. And what I'm thinking is that I don't actually have a winter coat. I spent my coat budget on the fabric, and September, in other words, this month, the month when things start turning cold, is the time I dedicated to sewing said coat. But cloaks are warm, so if I can finish this in time, I should have something to fend off the chill. Insomnia helped me finish threading the heddles, and now I'm slaying the reed. This keeps the yarn in order and prevents it from clumping together in the cloth. It is also much faster than heddle threading. The final task before I can start weaving is getting the warp tension just right. I don't normally lash on like this, but the technique is frugal with the amount of yarn it wastes. is it broke. Every broken warp thread is a chance to learn how to improve my spinning skills, and the same problem keeps coming up again and again with this warp. I'm not making a good join. You remember in the last video how I said, since I am weaving with this yarn, I need to be conscious of how I make this join. If I wrap the new fiber around the old yarn, it will make a weak spot that will wear and break as warp. Well, this is why. The fiber wrapped around the outside of the old yarn is abraded by the reed going back and forth until it eventually breaks. So obviously, I wasn't as mindful of my joins as I thought. But it's a quick fix, and I'm back to weaving again. As I approach the end of the warp, I have less room to throw the shuttle, until eventually it won't be able to find the shed, or little triangle path, for it to follow. I've woven as far as I can go, and I'm left with about a foot of loom waste on this end. Plus what was used lashing on? That's pretty good for this loom. What's left behind is called thrums, and it will be used in other projects. But for now, it has done its duty. We thank thee, thrums. But the cloth isn't done until it's finished. And 
This is fulling, where we transform the woven web into cohesive cloth. With water and agitation and a little soap, the yarn will fluff up a bit and felt together. This much cloth won't fit in my regular washing machine, so I'll use the ringer washer with its massive tank and awesome agitation skills. Almost too much so, as I can't undo fulling, so I need to check it often. I'll give this a rinse, hang it to dry, and see you later this month, I hope, to discover how the cloth turned out and if I can sew this into a cloak before winter gets here. I've got a pattern in mind, but I'm not sure yet if I have enough cloth, so if you've got any more suggestions, let me know. Please check out the Cape Timber hashtag in the description for more exciting capes, cloaks, ponchos, and projects of that ilk. Please let this be enough cloth.